So for the third novel, Stone Garden, once again I wrote about grief. This time through the eyes of a teenager, a high school senior who is going to graduate at the end of this year and she has just found out, Alice, that her best friend, her other a Heathcliff, Kathy type relationship, well they just passionately love each other but they haven't really become boyfriend and girlfriend. His bones have been found in Mexico and there's no hope that he'll ever come home. So at this point um, Alice, our heroine, is extremely angry, devastated, and well, all the things that happen when someone you love dearly has just disappeared from your life. So I'm going to read a couple of pages, and uh, hopefully they'll they'll pick up where I can't explain. Sometimes I forgot about outside while I was in school. You're in this place that exists in a separate universe, and everything that happens in there, bells ringing, teachers testing, kids being weird, is the only thing happening anywhere. But here, there was an entirely different set of rules. Animals were eating, horses grazed, squirrels nibbled, birds pecked, and a fox darted past us with some small, furry, doomed thing in its mouth. The fox's fur were like flame. If we hadn't come outside, I never would have noticed. When we went back inside, it was lunchtime. I usually ate on the windowsill with the hippies, but I didn't feel like talking to anyone, so I went into the cafeteria. Sigrid was sitting alone at a table, her sack lunch spread out, a sandwich, an apple, and a little bag of chips. It was the sort of lunch you ate in first grade. I sat down. Hi, Alice, she said. I could tell by her face she was very glad to see me, and for some reason that was nice. Hey, Sigrid, I said. You want half my sandwich? I nodded. Bologna on squishy white bread, not what my endive eating, salsa dipping, tabbouleh consuming friends usually considered food. It tasted great. You okay? Sigrid was looking at me with concern. Yeah. Did you get in trouble? I shook my head. Farley gave us a cookie, I said. Really? Uh-huh. We sat in silence for a moment. Hey, Sigrid, I said, can I ask you something? She nodded. Is your dad really sick? She looked away and then nodded. I'm sorry, I think my parents know him or something. He's got liver cancer. She looked back at me. It's pretty bad. Who takes care of him? There's a nurse. I saw she was about to cry. I'm sorry, I said again. He's dying, she said. I'm sorry. I couldn't stop saying that. It's okay, Sigrid said. He's been dying for a really long time. And then she started to laugh. I started to laugh. The thing was, it was all there. Matthew's bones and Isabel's lies and how Mrs. Swan's face looked when she stood in his room. Even the thought of Alf and how he still wanted me to wrestle with him made me feel like laughing. Bologna was coming out of my mouth. I was giggling so hard. People stared at us and some of the prep girls rolled their eyes. Probably I would be accused of being stoned, but I didn't care. There's a skull beneath the skin I wanted to scream at them, and someday you'll know the truth and no one will have prepared you for that pain. That night it rained. I slept and woke up and heard sounds outside. It was the kind of cold winter rain you imagine one of those unmarried girls in English folk songs carrying her baby through, carrying her baby until she fell over and died, and then of course the baby died too. This was the kind of music my mom played last year when she was mad at my dad. Alf and I called it dead baby music. I thought about the wolves that chased the sleds in my Antonia, the story of how the Russian guy threw the bride to them had haunted me for weeks. Everybody wants to live, Matthew had said, acting like it didn't bother him. I thought about the Moors and how Heathcliff and Eustacia Vi and Lear wandered around calling out for someone they couldn't have or something they had lost forever. I tried to stop remembering books, but then I thought about hobos on boxcars and babies left in trash cans 
and cats tied up in sacks and thrown into water. I could not stop the way the pictures kept streaming into my head, like some kind of speeded up video. But I would not think about Matthew. If I did that, I would get up and look through the window and see him standing outside, arms outstretched, calling for me. I could feel that he was there everywhere, and I wanted to be there with him. The next morning, I stood outside on the veranda and felt the sun on my face. I was just in my pajamas and it felt like spring. The droopy little white flowers were sticking their petals just above the dirt. My mother walked out with her coffee mug, a monstrous bowl my parents bought in Paris with a weird face painted on the side. La mer, it said. My dad swore it was a picture of Medusa who ate her kids and turned people into stone. How's school, she asked, like I didn't know. Farley's secretary had called already. Dandy. I stared down at the ground and dug my slipper into a mound of grass and earth. A bad thing to do. Alice? Yes. Don't do that to the lawn. I shrugged but continued to flex my toe to exert downward pressure until a huge clod of mud was dislodged, landing at my mother's feet. Alice. Sorry. Really. I mean, what's going on? She looked different in the morning. Younger but tired. Nothing, just the usual shit. Alice, oh mother, stop saying my name, okay? Just stop saying it over and over again. It makes me want to kill myself. I didn't look at her. I shouldn't have said that. I heard her sigh. I waited. Go away, I thought. Go away. So Matthew is the, uh, Matthew Swan is the friend who um, has disappeared and is now assumed dead. And um, Sigrid is a friend, well, she's not really a friend yet, but she's someone, an outcast in this fancy private school that Alice feels closer to since Matthew was pronounced dead. And um, there you are, a little more about writing about grief trying to use concrete examples of things, trying to capture the voices of the people around someone who has experienced intense grief. If you'd like to know more or read more or get help with writing, I am at theteachersway.com, mmwriting.com. Love to hear from you.